minister and witness to my sisters. This piece is titled, How Much Is That Diamond in the Window? Sister, sister, let me tell you about this here mister. He was fine and well-dressed. He was tall, dark, and handsome. The formula to be blessed. We captured each other's eyes, and that was just the beginning of the many soul ties. He swept me off my feet and danced my body into his bedroom. Sadly, there was no sister friend to warn me of all the forthcoming gloom. He whined me, he dined me, he bought me gift after gift. Unbeknownst to me, it was a plan of lust that sent my soul adrift. Ooh, girl, let me tell you how he made my heart beat out of my chest. I had to cook and clean and all things in between because he earned my best. He took me to Morton's on Monday, True Lux on Tuesday, West Gray Cafe on Wednesday, Tea Spot Drinks on Thursday, Friday and Saturday were fun days in the club, and Sunday was our day to chill while hanging at the pub. We repeated this pattern for six blissful months. It felt like we were on the path to commit to one another. I even had a strong desire to be his baby's mother. I was caught up so much he was all I thought about day in and day out. He still hadn't told me he loved me, but I felt it on the inside. I was so excited I couldn't wait till he said it. I knew it was going to make me shout. I had it all figured out. He had a picnic in the park plan together with all our friends. Oh, I knew in my heart this was the day. He had to bring my single status to an end. Girl, I found myself looking at wedding dresses, and Jared was calling my name. Mm. Funny thing, right before the picnic, we had our first argument, and things were never the same. He took his house key from me and said he needed time alone. I felt really bad for him because he seemed depressed. He wouldn't even answer his phone. After a few weeks went by, he started calling and asking to see me. We agreed to take it slowly because his wounds had scarred him deeply. One night we laid in bed watching movies and I fell asleep to minister society. He woke up midway and asked if I had seen it. I had not and responded so, not knowing he would have a fit. So girl, you will never believe what happened next because it just didn't make any sense whatsoever. He got mad and jumped on top of me. He began to choke me in a rage as he called me names wickedly. He was a former football player, so his stature was triple that of mine. I never thought to consider that one day it wouldn't matter if he was fine. <laughs> I gave my all to this man, and in a moment of time, that mattered not because my life was now on the line. When I realized death was on top of me, the fighter in me reared up. I looked at that pretty face and I clawed it like I was staring at a dead cup. He tossed me from the bed to the wall. I began to believe I was going to die. As he demanded me to get out of his house, I grabbed a few of my belongings and headed for the stairs. Did I mention he was a former athlete who moved strategically in this fight? I got to the stairs before he did, but he caught up and I took flight. I landed at the foot of the stairs, balled up in fear of death. By the grace of God, once I landed, I was able to stand and catch my breath. I grabbed my keys and ran for my light to my car in the parking lot. It was starting to feel like a horror movie because I was so shaken I couldn't get my keys in the keyhole. At that moment, I realized I had given up my soul. There was no turning back. I was devastated and afraid he'd catch up in route. I sped to the corner store and called a friend. I told her about what had happened and she assured me she'd help me figure it all out. The story doesn't end here, but I'm sure you can imagine where the next chapter began. Actually, 
you'd likely be surprised that I went back and gave him six more months of my life to drag me through an earthly experience in hell. So at this point, I want you to imagine how this story would have begun and ended if only I'd known my worth from the jump start. Wow. When we know our worth, the world will know our worth. And we can't let our actions, thoughts, or deeds devalue us. Why? Because our daddy is the king of kings. We are worth more than rubies, precious rubies. We don't have to give up our souls to be loved. We don't have to aggressively seek a man just to be in a relationship. We don't have to give up our temple to have a sound courtship. Right. We should not allow gifts and nice dinners to define love. Yes. We should not trust that dating someone for months or even years equates yes. to marriage. Yes. We should not want to have a child with anyone who does not serve the most high God right. and has asked my hand in marriage. Yes. We should not even consider courtship with someone who does not have a relationship with Jesus. Yes. Sis, real talk. Consider yourself a rare diamond that is housed in the world's finest jewelry store, which requires an appointment for viewing. Wow. The finest and the rarest jewel wow. in the world. Wow. So rare the cost is not disclosed to the public. Yeah. It can only be viewed from a special glass enclosure. That rare diamond is you. We are not to confuse our value with a counterfeit or a knockoff. Wow. Ask yourself this. How much am I worth? Now, do you know the answer? Proverbs 31 and 10 through 12 says, A wife of noble character who can find. She is worth far more than rubies. Her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. I encourage every sister, single or married, to meditate on Proverbs 31 and prepare yourself as the bride of your first husband, Jesus. Yes. The purpose of this gathering tonight is to revisit this question. Do you know your worth? Oh, Amen. Amen. Amen.